11th chapter of the book of Zechariah is a fairly challenging chapter, no greater than the biblical commentator Don Yitzchak Abarbanel, who wrote a phenomenal commentary on the entire Tanakh, much more systematic than anybody who sort of came before him, says, I don't understand this chapter. So don't judge me too harshly. Petach Livanon de la Techa, the Tochal Eish Ba'arazecha. Throw open your gates, Lebanon, and let fire consume your cedars. Okay, uh, you know, um, is, is this more destruction to Israel's enemies? Um, uh, unclear. Helel Birosh Kinafal Erez Asher Adirim Shudadu, Helilu Alone Vashan. So call out cypresses because the cedars have fallen. How the mighty are ravaged. Scream out the oaks of Bashan for the stately forest is laid low. And part of the question here is, asked is you know, is this really just talking about the forests? Are the, are the forest, are the trees supposed to be about people? Uh, is, you know, uh, uh, Lebanon is up north. Is it somehow an allusion to Babylon, Bab uh, Bavel, which was so haughty? Is it an allusion to another country, uh, another enemy of, of Israel who should now be crying out? And that's part of what's what's difficult to understand. Kol yilala taroim ki shudada adartam. Kol sha'agat kfirim ki shudad ga'on hayardain. Call out, right? Scream out. The, the wailing of the shepherds, the voice of the wailing of the shepherds, because the beautiful pastures have been ravaged. So call out the scream of the great animals, because the jungle of the Jordan has been ravaged as well. And uh, interesting there, this this word gaon, we've seen gaon used in, in, um, in many different uh, ways, usually it refers to the glory of something. Right. We were obviously in the modern context. We think of the Gaon of Vilna and a Gaon being a genius. The word that was given to a young genius in the uh, Eastern Europe in the late uh, 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, but he, in our books in the Tanakh, he usually refers to pride or glory or reputation. So different possibilities of what it might means here. In verse four, Pasuk Dal Komar Adonai Elohai, Re'etzon Haharega. God says, right, uh, um, go and uh, go take care, be a ro'eh, be a shepherd to the sheep that are meant to be slaughtered. So who is he saying this to, right? Is he saying it to the leaders of uh, of, of Israel that they were supposed to be destroyed and devoured, uh, B'nai Yisrael, but now they're not going to, and therefore you should take care of their? Asher konehen yahargun, Velo yeshamu umochrehen yomar baruch adonai va va ashir veroehem lo yachmol alehem. Those who own them, those who buy them, will slaughter them without any questions. They won't feel any sense of guilt. And those who sell them will say, Baruch Hashem, praise be God, I'll get rich from selling this, from being a slave trader. And their shepherds will not take pity on them. The leaders will allow it to, uh, to happen. Think about, you know, sort of the slave trade and, and uh, uh, whoever it was, uh, Europeans, uh, Americans, everybody who was involved. Part of the slave trade were African leaders who allowed their, uh, in some countries, not in every country, but in certain places who allowed uh, some of their pe people to be sold into slavery. They were not proper uh, ro'im. They were not proper shepherds uh, of their Flock. Continuing verse six, Kilo Echmol Odal Yoshveha Aretz Numa Dnai Vine and Ochi Mamsieta Adam Ishbiad Reu, Uviad Malko, Vichitu Eta Aretz Velo Atzio Miadam. Why? Because I will pity the inhabitants of the land no more. I will place everyone at the mercy of their neighbor and the mercy of their king, and the countries will be broken down, and I will not rescue them. That's not going to uh, happen uh, any any uh, more and so i will i will shepherd the sheep those who were meant to be slaughtered the poor poor sheep and i will take two staffs one i'll name 
favor or pleasant, no am. And the other one I'll name hovlim, which uh, in the, my translation says that it means uh, unity. Usually a hovel is, is something you cause uh, damage with. Um, hovel bechavero, right? So, so, um, so uh, here it, it has these, these two staffs. And what are these staffs going to do that are going to tend the sheep? Continue in verse 8. But I lost three shepherds in a short period of time, in one month. And, you know, with them, uh, my, my soul, my, my abilities, my patience was no longer. And in turn, they were, they were disgusted with, uh, with me as well. They were not too happy uh, with me. So some of the commentaries try to say that these were different kings of Israel, different kings of, of Yehuda. I smacked them down with, with my, uh, with, with my, uh, my staff and uh, they didn't, they, they were killed off and they didn't listen to me. And now we've gone our separate ways. But Omar, lo eretchem hameta tamut so I said, I'm not going to shepherd you anymore. Those who are on their deathbeds, you know, those who are going to die, die. And those who are going to be lost to history, let them be lost. And the, ref, the, the leftovers, the one who are here, let them devour each other's flesh. So I'm not going to uh, keep any unity or any pleasantness, like it said, on my staffs. I had my... Two staffs, God says, is rods that I could have been noam, that could have been pleasant, could have unified the people, but it seems like it's going to be chovel. Uh, they are going to be, they're not going to be protected, and therefore terrible damage is going to happen. But, ve'akachet makli, we're in verse 10, et noam, ve'egdauto lahafir et briti asher karati et kol ha'amin. I will take my staff, one that I called noam pleasant or favor, and I'll, I'll break it into two. And that will be sort of the annulling of the covenant that I, I had made with all uh, with all people. So is this talking about Israel? Is this talking about uh, uh, everybody? Is this talking about uh, what Brit is for for all the for all the people? It's uh, is it referring to the Brit of uh, of Noah? Right, the the covenants that were made with the Jewish people is not for all people. So it's um. Uh, it's it's difficult to understand exactly uh, what is being spoken about uh, here. Uh, and some of the commentaries try to even say, as we've said a couple times in the last books, that these are references to the Chashmona. I'm not sure how, but the Tufar Vayom Hahu Viedu Chain Ani Yatzon Ashomrimoti Kidvar Adonaihu. And when, right, when, when it ends on that day, then the poor sheep. Uh, who will know, who watch me, will realize that this is coming from God. Those who are righteous will realize that this destruction had to happen, that it will, that this was all from, from God, uh, and that's why the destruction happened, and uh, the others will remain. Maybe those say, refer specifically to Tenviim, but verse 12, Shloshim Kaseh. So I said to them, if you're happy, pay me my money. And if not, don't, if I didn't do a good job. So they weighed out my wages, which were 30 shekels of silver. Who does this refer to? Rashi says that it refers to the kings of uh, of, of Yehuda. Um, right? Uh, you know, if you don't trust my protection, okay, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you and that will be that will be enough. Others try to explain it in different ways that it refers to other uh, prophets. Um, so, unclear. So I said, take this, take this, this, this money. This uh, beautiful, uh, precious uh, about the money that I have, and place it in the treasury, deposit it there. So I took the thirty shekels. This is presumably Zachary speaking, and I just deposited it in the treasury of uh, the Beit Hamikdash. 
that's where I, I put it. Obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, it's not clear, right? We talk about Zechariah that most of the prophecies that we've seen at this time haven't yet been when the temple has been completed. It's during the time of the building of the second Beit HaMegish, the year 520, 519, 518, 517. It's possible that this these uh, chapters come later. Uh, academics look at these chapters and say from the eighth chapter on, it's the eighth chapter or the ninth chapter, um, that these were written, uh, you know, 50, 80, 100 years later. This is not the same uh, prophet Zechariah who, who writes them. So maybe it does come a little later. Maybe they already do have the uh, the treasury of the temple. Maybe it's just to help with the uh, with the building of the temple. But, okay, he deposits them. Begda et makli hasheni et hachovlim lahafer et ha'achava ben Yehuda uve Yisrael. And what did I do? Then I write, I just I smashed up, I broke into my second staff, the one that's hovel. I thought hovel again means, <laughs> you know, to cause damage. But uh, here it means apparently unity, the a oneness, because the the brotherhood of the two uh, tribes uh, of the two kingdoms of Yehuda and Yisrael is is no is no longer okay uh, they are they are no longer uh, this you could say goes back many centuries this is a historical lesson is this Vayomra Adonai Eli verse fifteen Od kach lecha kli roe evili so God said to me go get yourself some 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 shepherding uh, instruments. Now, uh, the, uh, it, Evel, this refers to somebody who's kind of uh, foolish or, or unwise. So go get, go get some unwise, go get some foolish, go get some, you know, go to somebody who's not a, a great shepherd. Why? Because I'm going to raise up in the land of the... Of, a shepherd who will neither miss the lost sheep, nor will he seek the stray, nor will he heal the injured, nor will he sustain the frail, but he will feast on the flesh uh, and tear off from the the healthy sheep. He's going to he's going to um, to tear off uh, uh, their um, th their hooves. So, you know, who is this referring to? Uh, is this referring to when Vuchanetzar comes in and destroys the Beit Hamikdash? Is this referring to uh, a terrible king of uh, of Israel? Is it in the past and it was referring to I don't know Menashe or somebody uh, of that sort? Um, uh, yeah, there are those commentaries who say that it refers all the way to to Herod. Herod. Um, so uh, unclear. Continuing verse 17, Hoy Roi He Alil Ozvi Hatson Cherev Al Zero O Vial Enyaminos Ro O Yavosh Tivash the Enyamino Kaho Tikha. Continue finishes this this chapter. That worthless shepherd who abandons his flock, let a sword come down on his arm and upon his right eye. His arm will shrivel up. His right eye will go blind. So who is the shepherd? Who is this foolish shepherd? Again, we don't know. When I see the arm that's dried up, it reminds me of the story of Yerabam ben Nevat, the uh, first uh, king of, of, of Israel, who, uh, when he was offering sacrifices, and Ishalo Kim came to him uh, all the way back. Maybe it's in the... Uh, no, the uh, uh, 50, you know, 10th chapter, 15th chapter, whatever it might be of, of, of Malachim Aleph and uh, tells him that uh, he's acting wrong and these bones are going to be burnt up by a future king of Israel. And Yeruvam tries to snatch him and his arm gets gets sort of gets uh, dried out and can't move. So is it referring to uh, to uh, uh, him? There are those who say that the, this idea of the eyes or, or maybe it refers to Tzidkiyahu, whose eyes, who is blinded. When he tries to uh, run away, um, uh, he's blinded uh, by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe the arms refer to him being in fetters. So it's a, a chapter. There are many chapters that are difficult, hard to understand. And this certainly is is one of them. And, um, you know, maybe one day Eliyahu will come and he will explain to us what these chapters mean, uh, as is understood in the Talmud that... Uh, 
which some of the Talmud that Eliyahu will come before the Mashiach and will uh, answer all of the strange questions and difficult questions that we that we have.